Hello and welcome to another episode of the F*** Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me as always, Andrew Pant and Gavin Free. This is episode 199. Canonically, we are now on our third episode after the greatest episode of all time. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Nick's not in the mosque. Oh. Okay. Wow. Okay. Dude, that was, wow. That was awesome. That was great. Out of the fucking Thank you, game. Gavin. That rock. Hell yeah. <laughs> just, uh, I just caught the dregs of pleasantries and I just, I can sit back this episode now. <sighs> so your guess is gone. All right. Well, Gavin's work is done. He's taking the rest of the episode <laughs> off. Hey, Andrew, what's, what do you got? <laughs> well, I, it's, I was, I saw a subreddit thread recently that made me really laugh about how it would have been the funniest thing if Nick would have worn the mask on the first episode post closure. That would have been incredible. Everyone's guard would have been down. Uh, that would have yeah. been the move. I feel like Nick has really missed some banger opportunities. Yeah. Yes. It's got me pretty impressed as to what, what he's actually going to pick. Do we what know is... that he hasn't worn the mask already and we just didn't catch it, though? Oh. Like, he... well, on the rules that he has to announce it at the end of the episode? That is correct. Oh. Okay. Let me ask you real quick. Did Nick remember those rules? I do now, but it, it's okay. I follow, I follow them. <laughs> <laughs> Had a feeling. Had a feeling about that one. But I followed them, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's honestly the amount of support that we've seen from the community in this last week has been unreal. I can't, I really oh, just so can't nice. believe it. It's been very real. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a hundred percent real that support yeah, gavin take this that, is take that gavin take it back. yeah this is our time to tell you that it is all fake we have staged every aspect of it this has all been a giant prank against you god if this was like a when when sal governally came into work late and howard told everybody he got everybody to agree to pretend that he had retired on air while he was in the subway <laughs> <laughs> and he's just crying on the couch. If that's all this is. <laughs> oh my God. And Bernie's going to pop out of a closet and be like, ah, surprise, I never quit. We're better than ever. <laughs> <sighs> oh, man. Uh, if only. If Except only. that we don't have to work with Bernie again, so maybe it's better this way. <laughs> <laughs> a little RT humor for you. Sorry. Sorry, Fist. <laughs> <laughs> I try, I try not to cross the streams too much. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. Man, I've been, uh, I don't know about y'all, but I've been getting real dark in my head lately. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not dark like, not like dark, <laughs> dark like I want to, uh, like if people talked about me on TikTok, they couldn't say stuff. Uh, just dark okay. like, d dark humor. I've just been making a lot of mean jokes about me and my life lately. I don't know. How oh, yeah. It. You think about uh, maybe restarting some of that therapy? <laughs> <laughs> I already did, dude. Yeah. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. First call was <laughs> to my therapist. I was like, I need to, unre I I need to unretire. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I approve of that decision. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. I'm hitting it hard. Oh, my God. Not the least of which. <laughs> What's the one thing that could make? Well, there's probably a couple of things that could make uh, this month better for me. What's the house related thing that could make this month better for me? Daily hand job? <laughs> no, I was going the other direction. I got oh. a cracked foundation. I had to get my foundation fixed. Oh, oh no. Uh, yeah, they got to jack my house up. It's going <laughs> to it's gonna be real. Oh, it's going to be a whole lot of work. It's going to be real expensive. Which side fell down? The bedroom side? Yeah, left side. And the right side a little bit. So we're going to jack the left and the right up. Just a tad. Do you think it fell under your weight of sleeping? It was from all that hard boning I do. <laughs> Gross. No. It's, you just uh, pile drive your house further into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, it's my, I'd like to do, I like to do jumping jacks in my bedroom in the same spot every day. Maybe that I mean, who does it? Maybe I just pushed it down. So when they repair a foundation, I have no idea how any of this works. Uh, in my head, if I was assigned for the job, I'd have to cut open your entire floor and no. then we'd pour cement in no. and then we'd put <laughs> over the floor. What no. is the actual process? Like, are you yeah. imagining like into the wood, like the floor of the, the bedroom? Like in the this house? is what I'm imagining. <laughs> Jeff's foundation is made entirely out of cement 
and it is cracked like the table in Narnia did with Aslan on it. And we need to restore the crack. And so we need to fill that hole with more cement. So I, I don't know how there'd be some type of tech that we could ping to determine where the hole is in the foundation. Oh, like and the then resonator we'd have to from cut. Gears of War? Yeah, exactly. That is, Eric just posted a photo of the prop of it. That is Jeff's house. One, we're done. That is what the repair looks like. We got to just pour some <laughs> cement in there, get that all fixed up. Yeah, it's basically they f they find the spot in your floor where it's cracked and they get a circular saw and they just do a big circle and just cut the floor out. Then they get a jackhammer. Then they just jackhammer <laughs> around the concrete. No, they go in from the outside. They tunnel under your house and then they stick uh, iron beams or steel beams in and then they fucking jack your house up like it's a car. How do they know that it's cracked? How do they make that determination? Well, it's not cracked. It's just shifted. It's moved. I, I, I don't know that it's physically cracked. It's just nomenclature I'm using. But it's, 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 the house has shifted and moved. And where it shifted is on an addition. So I think the whole addition has kind of just like on the piss a little bit. Do you think maybe the bean hole has caused some uh, subsidence? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe I, maybe I dug too close. I fucking... <laughs> Nick said his house got jacked 14 inches. Jesus Christ, Nick! Dude, it was bad. You, was all your shit rolling into the corner? Yeah, we <laughs> found out because uh, the guy who came to check the house is like, hey, why don't you just put down a battery and see what happens? And it rolled from the front of the house to the back of the house. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, damn. It's like wheelie chair. Is like constantly <laughs> <laughs> I remember after Nick got that done, I asked him how it was going and he said he had to like learn how to walk different in his house. <laughs> <laughs> you're walking at an angle. You don't account for it. And then you walk up the stairs and you slam into a wall because you're not... <laughs> <laughs> he had to like smooth criminal while he was just stood in the middle of the house. Navigating <sighs> through his house like a Sherpa. Uh, it felt like it. God damn. That's fucking awesome. Just imagine uh, he puts down a glass of wine and it's just like at 12 degrees in the glass all the time. <laughs> I need to see a photo of what a house looks like when it's lifted. Because what I'm imagining can't be <laughs> Man, it's pretty common in Texas. We got shitty dirt here. A lot of houses, a lot of houses, foundations have problems. I lived in the, the first house I lived in was on a street. I was the third house in a, a long row, right? And there were 12 houses on the street. Houses 12 through four cracked in a row. When it got to my house, I sold it and moved. <laughs> just outrunning this oh, crack. I, I outran the crack. Yeah. That's crazy. Look at these pictures of how they do it. I can't believe it doesn't just cut the house in half. How does it not no. crack somewhere else in the wall? It does. You think the, that the way that they should do it is to cut the house in half? <laughs> no, no. no, he's saying he, he's surprised. He said, how it does doesn't. it not? Yeah, how does it not crack the walls when you lift up one side of the house? It does. I, I mean, oh. it does. Oh. And the, the problem is, <laughs> oh, no. it does. <laughs> Yeah, this is how this is how you know that you need to get your foundation repaired. What they're trying to do is save Just you from it. having to find out that you need to get your foundation repaired. Yeah, you fix it now before you have that. Can I just keep it in the elevated state? What if I like having my house be a little bit taller, like the platform shoes of houses? I mean, they're not jacking it higher than it needs to go. They're going to jack it right up to where it's level and then yeah, they're not, walk, then they fill the dirt and I walk see. away. They're not like but stilting I, it permanently. But can't I just stilt it permanently? <laughs> can't we I mean, just maintain could, the level and go higher if I wanted to? You could also just buy a house on stilts. It's true. Uh, not many Start. of them. Go Aren't, live by the ocean. There's, there's tons of them. Dude, Andrew, the entire, there's so many stilted houses. There are so many stilted, stilted houses. The entire Gulf Coast is stilted houses. Yeah, Gal there's millions Gracie of them. Gracie just said move to Galveston. Yeah. Yeah. Galveston, Texas no. has stilted houses. I don't like stilted houses that much. <laughs> I don't like Galveston, Texas. Yeah, I'm with you, man, 100%. Yeah, I hear you. The only problem with the stilted houses is where, where it is. You got to live in the fucking <laughs> Gulf Coast. It's dog shit. Yeah. But you could do there. stilted houses here, right? Sure. I think it would be really funny to be the only stilted house on a block. Just a suburban neighborhood and one house is stilted. <laughs> Just being superior, enjoying that height advantage over all the other homes, looking down on them. That would be my dream. Then you could piss out of that window. Oh, yeah. oh man. the rain. Yeah. Gracie just posted a stilted house. That looks great. Oh, see, that's, that's nice. That's I would live there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. That's really pretty. Where is that, Gracie? Google. 
I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> we'll just we'll just right, we'll just say Galveston. Damn. Yeah, sure. I didn't, know. Deputy I didn't know people were living that like is. that. <laughs> yeah, right. That house is worth more than Deputy Indiana. <laughs> yeah. I bet you could buy all of whatever unincorporated Indiana that is, Deputy, for half of that house. You know, us talking about your house problems reminds me of a, a thing I did recently. I should talk about. Did you fly down to Texas and secretly crack my foundation? Because if so, I'm going to be annoyed. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Oh, you okay. know about this. You already know this isn't news to you. This is news to other people. I uh, I don't know if you, you've heard, but the company is closing. And uh, <laughs> as, a, as a part of that, uh, there's a big sale happening at the Rooster Teeth store. Selling a lot of merch. Got all sorts of stuff you can buy. A lot of it going on heavy discount at points. Um, I was at the store. I was looking at the store. I've been doing a thing. I've kept a personal list of uh, our merch and how much inventory we have of, of all the items. So I have an idea roughly of what we have the most of and what we don't. And I was looking at our store and I noticed that the clock, our slop o'clock, which is our least, the most bought item for selling and then the least sold item I think we've ever made was on sale for one dollar. It's a dollar. It's a great, that's a great deal. Then on top of that, I have a staff discount, which is 75% off any item or any Whoa. order. Wow. Yeah. Great discount. So I, you know, Jeff talked about in a recent episode, him wanting to prank me, which puts me on guard, which makes me want to strike first. So I texted Jeff, hey, I'm, I want to make an order from somewhere. U.S. shipping prices are high. Can I send something to you? And then whenever I'm around next, could I, I, I'll just pick it up from you. Do you mind if I do that? And Jeff said, yeah, that's fine. And then uh, I took that information and proceeded by ordering 1,001 slop o'clocks <laughs> and sending them to Jeff's address. <laughs> I also bought 75 waffle makers and sent those to Jeff's house. Uh, my two orders. I then proceeded to tell Jeff, that's kind of big, but good news is I got free shipping. So thanks. <laughs> and he's <laughs> Jeff was like, awesome. It's great. <laughs> and then I thought about what I had done. <laughs> and I was trying to imagine because I got free shipping on the thousand one clocks. And I was like, how like just I'm trying to imagine this because it's hard to imagine a number of that Ooh. scale for clocks. <laughs> And I did a rough calculation of if you were to lay the clocks down end by end, not even including the packaging, just the clock itself, it would have went on for 330 yards, which is like <laughs> almost three and a half football fields. Um, then I, I felt guilt. I felt genuine guilt. It was at that point you felt guilt, huh? You didn't feel guilt yeah. at any point before. Okay. <laughs> no, it was at that point I felt, man, you know, Jeff... Jeff, I don't know. I don't know where he's at mentally for this joke. I think it's really funny. I think there's a point in which Jeff would think this is funny. That's going to uh, tip his house completely on its it side. It may correct it. Honestly, <laughs> it may fix it. We don't know. The could have used which... the clocks to prop the house up, maybe. Oh, yeah. yeah you definitely <laughs> could do that. So then I, I broke and I texted Jeff and I said, Jeff, I need to be honest with you. This is... Uh, <laughs> How you doing emotionally? Because it is a really big order that I sent you and uh, as like a bit. So if you're not, I can, I'll figure something out if you're not in a place to deal with this. And Jeff replied by saying, well, how big are we talking? Are we, are we saying like <laughs> the size of a shoebox or the size of a couch? There's nothing worse than a text from Andrew that starts with, I need to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I know. And by the way, I was hanging out with Burn Dog and Vanessa, so as soon as, as soon as he said that, everybody was texting you. We were all crowded around my phone. I See, I don't know if I agree. Gavin, I don't know if I agree, because I think the scariest text that you can get from Andrew is what I just said, where he says, can I trust you to keep it a that secret? Was, <laughs> so that is way worse. I, that, was, yeah. that was in my panic phase. That's a bad one. <laughs> I was, I was in my panic phase and I was like, I need to talk to someone to like validate that this is funny and Jeff isn't going to just murder me and be angry about this. So I reached out to Eric and Eric more, I'd say, pushed me over the edge of I should be concerned. And oh, less. I said he's going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. 
So the problem is, because I, as I said, the company is dying uh, in the event someone missed it. Um, <laughs> there's a big banner. <laughs> there's a big banner on the site that says in all caps, all sales final with three exclamation. <laughs> so I can't, I couldn't cancel the order. So after Jeff explained that he was not in a position to handle a thousand one clocks, uh, and that I had to, to relocate it, it, it turned into I had this missile of a thousand one slop of clocks that I couldn't shoot down. <laughs> and it's going to crash somewhere and I had to deliver it. So I gave Jeff the opportunity. I said, just either give me an address of anyone you know that you want to send this to, oh and I God. will swap it to that. Or I have an alternative. I think all I said was, I don't care. Just undo it from my house. I <laughs> How did you I phrase this to Andrew saying, please don't do it? <laughs> I said, undo it now, I think is what I said. <laughs> Jeff was, I was surprised that Jeff didn't like just send this to Jack's house or something. It seemed like Jeff did not want to crash this missile into anyone that he knows. Well, first so off, I, I didn't think that they were going to ship it. The shipping f cost on that alone, I think, is like, I, I think it's free shipping within reason. I can't imagine they would have actually <laughs> shipped the clocks out. I mean, in, that's in that. pallets of clocks. That's yeah. going to have to be like freight delivery. <laughs> yeah, we, so. uh, we, we, I had a slop of clock here. So me and Burn Dog and Vanessa, we measured it. It gets real big real fast when you put a thousand of them there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining Jeff having to deal with it. It's like that scene in Hook with all the clocks. <laughs> oh, it'd, it'd be like the fucking porta potty all over again times five. You could wallpaper. <laughs> you could just tile a house. It was like he was gonna drop six porta potties in my front yard, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> so then this went to the next phase where I had to figure out okay, well, who. I didn't wanna lose the free shipping, so I had to think of who else do I know in Austin? Because uh, I can't cancel. And the, the guy, the, an immediate friend of mine came to mind who I thought, oh, he wouldn't he won't kill me if I do this to him was the guy I used to do applesauce races with. So I messaged him. and I said, hey, can you give me your address? And he sent it immediately and then said, I feel like I probably shouldn't have done that. That seems like a mistake that I just gave you my address. I take it back. Hey, can I have your address? It's the worst thing you've ever <laughs> yeah, seen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So then he he replied, uh, I was like, no, nah, uh, do you want some free merch? And he said, yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and I was like, cool, you got it coming your way. And then uh, he's also the person I sent a battle bus to in the past. Oh, yeah. And I said, oh, the inflatable hey. one. Yeah. I was like, hey, do you still have the battle ba bus? And he said, I do. And I said, you, you're going to want to get rid of that because you're going to need some room for this merch. <laughs> and then he replied, Okay, I'll do that tomorrow. I have a garage. Don't worry about it. I'm all good. And I replied, I'm glad you're all good. I was worried it would be too much. I'm glad you've got this covered. And then I woke up the next morning and I felt guilt about that as well. <laughs> and I, I had to once again have this conversation of, hey, uh, it's a thousand one clocks that are coming your way. Are you okay with this? And they're like, I don't, I don't have room for a thousand one clocks. <laughs> Which then led me back to the original problem of this missile is flying and I feel like I need to get it locked in before it initiates being shipped. And so then I just tweet, who wants a thousand one clocks? <laughs> and uh, I realize a lot of people think they can handle a thousand one clocks without really understanding the logistics of it. There were a lot of people that were like, yes, but I, I just don't think that those a majority of them really appreciated both the weight and scale of a thousand one clocks. But eventually, uh, somebody, uh, Colin Parker, agreed to take it, who's an awesome guy. And uh, I felt relieved. I was like, okay, let's, uh, let's, we don't need to worry about stress. The person knows what's coming that's going to get it. This is all handled. But then I was curious, so I messaged Tony. And I said, just out of curiosity, do you know how much a thousand one clocks weighs for what it is? And Tony said, give me a minute. And he got back to me. And revealed that it would have uh, it weighs on 900 pounds. <laughs> a thousand one yeah. clocks yeah. weighs 900 pounds. And then what, half a ton of clocks. <laughs> I uh, reached out, was like, yeah, I need to. I emailed about it already, but I really need to change the address of where that order is going. Um, 
could uh, could we change it? And he said, let me reach out to someone. And then uh, there was a long break. And then uh, I got another slack from a different person on the merch team saying, hey, can we cancel your <laughs> thousand one clock order? Because uh, people are stressing out about it. The amount it would lose in ship, like the cost of shipping would cause us to lose so much money that we can't <laughs> can you cancel it. And uh, I felt a tremendous amount of relief to learn that the missile could be shot down. And, you might be uh, the worst person in the world to have around during the final month or so of a company's <laughs> existence. <laughs> all these people trying to like get all their ducks in a row and then you fire a bowling ball into the middle of the ducks. Any other time in my life, <laughs> other than the disillusion of my company, I would have rolled with it. Had you done this and pulled it off, it would have fundamentally changed the relationship you and I share. <laughs> We would still do a podcast together. I would still consider you my friend, but it would take things to a level, Andrew, that there would be no coming back from. Oh, my God. Well, I, I had my my plan laid out of uh, my first line of defense, if it would have went through, was that I did technically ask permission before I did it. My yeah. second line of defense would be <laughs> arguing that I'm buying merch to sell from a store later. <laughs> That I could then resell this at an almost definite profit, considering what I bought it for. Um, Eric said, why do I need a line of defense? Because it's a thousand one clocks, Eric. You need the plan. There's going to be there's going to be waves. Do you know why? Arrival. Do you know why we had a thousand and one clocks laying around for you to buy? Because nobody fucking wanted them. At, hey, it doesn't we can sell them. It doesn't at a matter discount. how cheap we buy them. Nobody wanted those fucking clocks. I don't even remember the decision to sell a clock. I remember the the uh, original like number being wrong on it. I thought it was funny, and uh, yeah. uh, but you know, they, I guess they can't all be fridge magnets. You know, I stand by <laughs> it. I think it was a. I think it was a great product that made sense with the thing that we were doing, yeah. and it's a great design. I don't know why people didn't want it. I agree. I agree on all those points. I took down a clock I've had for 10 years and replaced it with a slopper clock clock. And I, I love it. It's in my living room. Mine's hanging right behind me in my office. Yeah, it's I the only it. piece of face gear I have displayed in my house. That was <laughs> blur. Was that? I think it's really funny that Gavin, the guy who has never attended a merch meeting ever, says, I don't remember that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, because you silly <laughs> bastard, a lot of the merch that we sell comes from <laughs> discussions in the episode. Speaking of merch that are discussions in the episode, our very bastard. last face drop, our very last face drop ever is March 29th, Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, we'll have the Sloppy Joe's jersey and foam hands, and the cookbook. We're going out on top. That's our very last merch drop. I'm letting you know right now in the middle of this episode, March 29th, 10 a.m., last face drop ever. It's going to be so bittersweet to end on the cookbook because I think it's the, the merch I'm the most proud of that we've made. I just think it's tremendous, and Tony did, and that whole team did such a good job on it. I'm glad we're going out on a high note, um, but, man, it sucks that... Sucks that, that, uh, that there won't be another cookbook right behind it, you know? And is it true that we've sold over a thousand Ratey Boy shirts? Yeah, it's almost our number one shirt all time. I think it's, it's going to dethrone Anal Passage. Yeah, that's pretty close. It's on its way. It's yeah. very close. It's unbelievable. We need, we need Ratty Boy. <laughs> we need Eric United. You know, <laughs> don't talk He's to a... me about Ratty Boy. I don't want we him. Need Ratty Boy. <laughs> Listen. I don't want anything I'll... to do with him. The fucking Bart Simpson looking ass. I don't want Eric. Him. <laughs> they're about to put a thousand one clocks back in the store, and I I'll get another missile ready. I'll figure <laughs> out where you live. <laughs> we we can uh, we can keep those clocks in my studio if you want. Uh, there might just be a uh, a thousand clocks behind me in the next slow mo. I feel. <laughs> I need well. I need to talk to merch to figure out what is the maximum amount I can buy within one order well, to get free shipping. Yeah, here's the issue with the free shipping is that he was trying to ship 900 pounds of clocks <laughs> on free shipping. The loss they would have eaten on that would have negated anything we've ever done. That would have been astronomical. <laughs> yeah, that would be the worst. We might go out of business if we did something like that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> 
<laughs> the other side part of this uh, that that made me really laugh is I had learned independently that my friend Path had bought like seven hundred million dollar butt card games, and uh, <laughs> when I I <laughs> when. <laughs> When I got reached out to about canceling my order, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to cause stress. I didn't realize that there was a scenario in which this would be bad on, on that side. I, I didn't think it mattered at this stage. But uh, he said, no, it's fine. It's just uh, your order and some other person's order who ordered like a thousand pounds of cards. And it, it was so funny to be able to go. I know that guy. I, that doesn't that's not that's not related to me. I had nothing to do with that. But I know that guy. That's fine. You're going to they're going to cancel that. No problem. Don't worry about it. Um, I almost left my 70 or 75 waffle makers being sent to Jeff. I thought about pretending that I forgot that I had also made that order. And then <laughs> yeah, you never mentioned the Jeff waffle makers. I'm learning hit. about them right now in real time. Yeah. Jeff would get hit by those. So then, but then I reached out to Jeff and I said, how's it going? And Jeff, you said, my fridge is broken. The fridge oh, that you've waited yeah. over a year for. It's not and, though, uh, surely. It's surely not broken. I don't know. So here's what happened. <laughs> I woke up the other morning and my fridge was beeping at me. And I opened it up and on the digital display, there was a little wrench icon. And, and so Emily, uh, Emily actually <clears throat> is the one that found it. So she, there's a card in my, in my fridge that has like, you pull out like a plastic card that says like what to do in case of shit, you know? And it says like for the wrench, it means you, you need to clean the coils so it shows you how to do that. You turn the fridge off, you clean the coils, and then turn it back on. It should be good as new. So I did that, turned it back on, and uh, it, uh, it just kept beeping. And so I did it again, and it just kept beeping. And so I called the fridge support line because I have like a full warranty on it. And she was like, oh, yeah, this happens from time to time. What you need to do is just flip your circuit breaker for a minute turn it off, and then turn it back on, it should be good. And so I did that, and it went away. The beeping went away for one hour, and then it started again. <laughs> and then uh, I just flipped the breaker again, and it went away again for about one hour. And uh, then I flipped the breaker again, and it went away again for a couple of hours, and then it came back. So I flipped the breaker again, and then it went away, and it just hasn't come back. But if it does... I'll just flip the fucking breaker again. I don't care. <laughs> That's all I can do. That's all I got in that me. Was, it was, that was the, the tone uh, I got from Jeff when I asked how things are going, and he told me about the fridge, and then said, I'm on the support line. I have to go, which I don't think Jeff has ever texted me. I have to go for any reason. So as soon as that conversation ended, I immediately went back to the store and it said, can we please, we have to, can Jeff is not ready for these waffle makers. We need to cancel it. At what point since the news has he seemed ready for any of this at any point? Uh, <sighs> that's actually an interesting question. How many <laughs> times have we spoken since the news that I haven't burst into tears at least once? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's largely today's going to be the first day, I think. It's been over text a lot of the time, so, so I, I, I never the whole assume time. that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But I got it. We thankfully got that order taken down. So you're like, well, there's no. <laughs> this is, it's all gone. If you you are looking in the store for a waffle maker or a clock, there will be one available. If not already, then soon. The reason in that moment I said I had to go is because I had to focus on what the lady was about to tell me because if what the lady was about to tell me <laughs> was in any way bad, I was probably going to snap and lose my, lose my mind. And then yeah. I was just going to start. I don't know what would have happened. <laughs> but I needed to focus on that. So I had to be like, I had to, I had to sever personal relationships for what was about to happen. And then it just didn't happen. So that was cool. That was cool. Either way, I made the right read of I need to kill these waffle makers as yeah, soon as something possible. Was, something was going to get killed, and I'm glad it was the waffle makers. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, you have a lot of relationships in your life and friendships and, and work relationships and things like that. And uh, I, I think they're all you know difficult, but there's a lot to be proud of when you have friendships that last 
you know, I have friends that I've, I've had for 20 plus years that I'm really proud of and everything. And, and it always takes work, right? It's always, it's always difficult no matter what kind of relationship it is. And a common misconception about relationships is they have to be easy to be right. But sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work to make them great. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all your relationships, whether with friends, work, your significant other, or anyone. Uh, BetterHelp is here for you guys. You've heard us talk about BetterHelp for a long time. I know a lot of people who are in therapy, a lot of people who have gotten the help that they need uh, through being matched not just with a therapist, but with the right therapist. And I think that's fantastic. You know, it's it's helpful for uh, learning how to cope not just with yourself, but again, in your relationships and everything like that. It, I think it's great. I think um, that no matter the trauma that you're going through, big or small, I think everyone experiences something. And I think it's it's great for anyone to try therapy. And uh, what better way to get it than BetterHelp? If you're thinking about giving uh, therapy a try, why not give BetterHelp a try? It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist or switch therapists at any time with no additional charge. I think that's think that's really important is it's not just about finding someone who will listen. It's someone that'll help you with the skills that you need and help you grow the relationships that you have. Uh, become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. You can go to betterhelp.com slash face, F-A-C-E, today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash face. This episode is also brought to you by Cosmic Crisp. Really? It's really brought to you by Cosmic Crisp. I mean, that's fantastic. It's the number one apple in the world, according to us. So I think it's very important for you to get to know your favorite regulation, Apple the Cosmic Crisp. If you know, you know. If you're listening to this, you definitely know. It's a classically bred cross of Honeycrisp and Enterprise varieties, and it's non-GMO. Cosmic Crisp apples pack a flavor that's a balance, perfect balance of sweet and tart, making them versatile for all the ways that you want to enjoy apples. We've baked with these apples. That'll be coming out later. Don't worry about that right now. We've eaten these apples straight. We love Cosmic Crisp, and hey, they love us enough to sponsor this, so definitely give them a shot. Try a Cosmic Crisp on your own and let us know what you think. Born and bred in Washington State after 20 years of research and development at Washington State University, the Cosmic Crisp is the official Apple partner and sponsorship of the Face podcast. You can learn more and get recipes right now at CosmicCrisp.com. You can also follow Cosmic Crisp Apple on all social media channels. They want to hear from face fans. Uh, they have a lot of interaction with them. Uh, I love the Cosmic Crisp. I love what they've done for us. I love that we have an official Apple sponsor. Thank you, Cosmic Crisp, for coming through and helping out face when we need you the most. We appreciate you. I was going to say the other thing. I just, my last point on this, which, which adds to the chaos, I forgot to mention. Uh, previous and uh, not to alarm people, but the company, in fact, is closing uh, the day that <laughs> it's the news came out. I was set up on my new phone. So we talked about my history of my Umi Digi, my alarm going off. I had to get a new Umi Digi and I, I got the Umi Digi Bison. So I, I got a powerful <laughs> new phone that I was very excited about. Um, How much was this phone? A uh, hundred dollars on sale. Is this the um, phone that wouldn't let you respond in the group text? Well, that's, us that's, all? What, that's what I'm going to get to. <laughs> I had just set this phone up and then the news comes out that the company's closing. And immediately I want to go to the group text just to be like, I, I love you guys. And none of my texts will go through. Um, and I think it's because I recently got a text saying that if your phone is iPhone six generation or older, and I wasn't sure when the Umi Digi Bison came out. Uh, we will no longer support group text. That individual text will work, but group text will not. So I can look in the group text group text chat and see what you all are saying. And I think I can like e put an emote on messages, but I couldn't write anything. And it was just a disastrous time to learn that your phone does not work in a group text setting. It was awful. Andrew made me his stenographer, so he would text me what he wanted to say to the group, and then I would text it from Andrew. And then I thought, this is a long-term problem. But thankfully, uh, you know, the Umi Digi brand, uh, and, uh, one of my many favorite things about it is you have to m manually set up your mobile network, which I had never had to do before by, like, adjusting APN settings. 
and I guess I had done it correctly to enable the ability to use mobile data uh, without a Wi-Fi connection, but I didn't set up the texting aspect of it correctly. So I went back in and I was able to fix it. I'm now back in the group text, but it was just the worst timing to not have access to a group chat, especially one that you could see. I kind of felt like Matthew McConaughey behind the library in Interstellar at the end. Where he's, he's like yelling at the wall. Like I could see what was happening, but I couldn't interact with anybody. It was You're just thumping on your screen and all our watch okay. hands are wobbling. I'm just thumping on the bison and it, it, it's yeah. Wouldn't work, but I'm I'm excited. My camera's worse than before. It's a lower, is it lower quality than 50 camera. Megapixels? Yes, it is. It's a lower camera. <laughs> Does it right. say Umi Digi on it? It does not. Picture? Sadly, I re that was the first thing I tested. I really wanted it to say Umi Digi Bison in the bottom left. It doesn't. There's no watermark. You know, if we ever get to a point where, or I shouldn't say if, when we get to the point where we're making merch again, I we should do a coffee table book of Andrew's Umi Digi photos that we collect throughout the history of <laughs> face. <laughs> like lovely high quality like, card yeah. gloss huge gloss i think like the nicest coffee table book you have that somebody it's like 125 bucks and you feel <laughs> stupid that you own it but you wanted to put something on your you know and it's like art you don't even really uh, understand <laughs> you just want to look important but inside it's just fucking pictures of ping pong balls blown up with the umi digi logo <laughs> on the bottom left i feel like we could do the entire photography of face like jeff's yeah. uh, like sideways blurry pictures are there too <laughs> That'd be that'd be fun. Let me get a preview for you. I just took a photo right now on my screen. What our 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 book would look like. Uh, this fucking phone sucks. Speak <laughs> of <laughs> shit phone this is. What a fucking while he's uh while he's I'm doing send him a new one. <laughs> while he's doing that, uh, please don't uh, please don't send him a new one. This is perfect. Uh, <laughs> he needs to be able to talk to us though. <laughs> he fixed it. He figured it out. He set up it his mobile IP in no, network, and now he can talk to us. Yeah, he put he an eagle Umi emote Digi, in there, so he can talk to us. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, while he's trying to figure out how to send that, I had an idea for a book I wanted to talk to you guys the other day. I, I, I not the idea I just had right now, but a previous idea that I had. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, have been paying attention, and by you guys I mean uh, Face Crew, but uh, I'm back on that fart game. Uh, I've been recording <laughs> yeah, a lot of are. fart. I've been recording a lot of farts lately. Been sending I, you guys a lot of farts. <laughs> Can I play Can, the one I got last night? Yeah, sure. Not my best work. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. The other one I had the other day was a lot wetter. Uh, I, was, I, I played it in bed and Meg was next to me and she was just like... <sighs> And then she was like, that wasn't his best. <laughs> no, I, mean, I got to work on it. I didn't, I didn't have any farts in me this morning. I tried. Uh, but anyway, I was, I've been sending you guys farts, and I've been kind of just really enjoying the whole recording fart process again and the whole thing. And I got to thinking, wouldn't it be cool to release an audio book called A Thousand and One Farts? And it's just a thousand and one of my farts? <laughs> it's it's going to be... <laughs> People listening to the first 45 seconds going, I, okay, and then turning it off. No one's going to listen to a thousand farts. Sure they will. Who's going to leave will. that on? I will. <laughs> it won't be a thing. It'd be like, uh, it's like maybe, how long does it take you to do a thousand? Months? It's a short book. And it's just a fart a page. And it would be funny <sighs> if I also sold an Amazon Unlimited version that's not audio. And then I just write out what each fart sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> do you think I, we can each then yeah. take... Your written farts and get Stephen Fry to narrate it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So we'll have it's an. Uh, it, so what we would have to have is the we'd have to have the written book adaptation of the audio book, then translated into audio. I really like the idea of it being a physical book where you read it and it's just the text of the, the noises. Yeah, so we've got we've got Andrew's picture. <laughs> it's uh. I want to clean the lens. No, it's clean. That's a clean lens. <laughs> you sure you didn't drop milk all over it? <laughs> no, I'm positive. <laughs> Do you, did you maybe rub Vaseline on the, on the front of it? Oh, no. The bison is clean. Don't you worry about that. Mm. That, that, looks, that looks like it's from so many years ago. Yeah. I also heard Eric and Nick's time travel bit, but it was at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> Where did it need to be? It'd be to be right in the middle. Like you're interrupting the episode for the future. You just came in 
at the start? Yeah. Why was it from the future if it was at the well, beginning? Well, that's, that's as close as we could get with time travel. <laughs> <laughs> we could only get we we just we could get near the episode and so that's as close as we could get. Yeah. I fucking loved that you guys did that because I had completely forgotten about that. <laughs> so good. And when Wait. I heard it, I went, what the fuck are they? Oh, <laughs> God, good for them. And then I thought exactly what Gavin thought. Why are they from the future right now? Why wouldn't they do it? <laughs> well, again, I want to reiterate that when it's an inexact science, as Nick says, when you're yeah. time traveling, you can get close. It's the thing where in time cop, you can't like touch yourself or you become like a monster or whatever uh it's just sort of like that why don't next We're time you time try and get on the other side of the intro music mm, <laughs> we, can, we can try but again no pinpoint you know what we'll try before our next merch drop comes out and we'll see oh. if there's we'll see where we can land it might gavin i'll be honest with you it might be at the beginning again it's, it's yeah. not up to us it's right. not up to us I mean, it's I just the like... way this happens <laughs> I feel like Nick was really working hard to keep the the, the time portal open. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah, best yeah. part of it was just every every like ten seconds, Nick would just be like, ah. <laughs> 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 it was "So good, you guys were it was, you guys are wonderful. That was awesome." Yeah. <sighs> Two out of ten for placement, but ten out of ten for effort. <laughs> that's a twelve. It's not, hey. it's not on us. That's just where it landed, man. Hey, that's a twelve right. out of twenty. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> it's not, yeah, and it's not very good either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I? Uh, all kidding Ugh. aside, and uh, by, and by the way, I'm serious about the hundred and a thousand and one farts book. So please don't let me forget. I do need to record a thousand and one farts. You got a lot of work today. Time. That's I like know, I know. That I could know. take you longer than Andrew's 20,000 things. It might, because they're not all, you know, I would say one out of every four farts is ebook worthy, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to fart out. I'm going to have to record 4,000 farts to get 1,001 good farts. And think of the amount of piss that you're going to have to sift through. Yeah, that's a lot of piss, dude. <laughs> Maybe I should just start recording my shits and then try to connect oh, those no, farts. No, they won't no. Know. Please you would no. know. You'd probably be pretty splattery. Oh, uh, anyway, uh. Speak, it's speaking of something serious for a second, though, I know, uh, as Andrew mentioned, Rooster Teeth's, uh, Rooster Teeth's yeah, they're closing. closing down. Uh, that's not the only serious thing that's going on right now. There's uh, Gavin, I, I'm, I, uh, as, a, as, a, as a friend, uh, I'm pleading to you, let me know, because I know you know you're British. Where the fuck is Kate Middleton? What's going on? I'm just, I just can't divulge that. You, you just have don't have the right to. passport. She, she, nobody's seen her since December 25th, Gavin. What did they decide? The, the picture of her was a load of bollocks? Or? The picture of her with the kids was a load of bollocks. It's mm. uh, he heavily photoshopped in a lot of weird ways. There have been... Dude, I have fallen down the... It's actually helped keep me sane. Uh, I have ignored <laughs> my rooster teeth pain by watching one million TikToks about Kate Middleton. It's all <laughs> I do uh, now is I just... I've, and, and then when Emily gets home, I, I give her reports. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, I think that the, the one of her and the three kids from Mother's Day is heavily photoshopped. People are pretty sure that the face is from a 2016 Vogue cover. Uh, the outfits that all the kids and her are wearing are identical outfits to when they were, uh, at a, like doing like a food kitchen like three weeks earlier. And they just looks like they photoshopped the color of her sweater to be black, but they don't even make that sweater in black. They only sell it in uh, bone and camel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you think right? it's a little bit creepy the amount of time people have spent on this, though? <laughs> yeah, but what else are people gonna do? The world's on fire, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get into something. And if these people don't do it, then the royal family gets away with it. Here's the facts, dude. She hasn't been seen <laughs> since December twenty fifth, December twenty eighth. An ambulance is seen leaving the residence, and they've never divulged who was in it or what was happening. Then she and William, right before December twenty fifth, announced that they're gonna go on a spring tr uh, trip to Italy. And then in January, they go, oh, by the way, she's going in for a routine stomach surgery. Why would she schedule a trip? trip to Italy if she was going for a routine stomach surgery and then their nanny quit in the middle of it and she's Spanish and then the Spanish journalist came out and said that she had an inside source from the house who said that Kate Middleton is in a coma <laughs> hmm? and the and then Kensington came out and said that's not true and then the journalist doubled down on it what about that what about this whole thing about whether Prince William has been or I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, William has been having an affair with their next door neighbor who apparently likes to peg him. What about that? 
Hmm? <laughs> what about their friend, Kincaid, who just committed suicide by shooting himself in the head when nobody in England even has a gun? What about that? And then Camilla didn't go to the funeral. Only William did. And then when it was announced that Charles had cancer, even Harry came back to spend 45 minutes with him. But William hasn't even issued a public statement. And fucking uh, Kate Middleton was in the hospital for 14 days. And William only visited her once on day three. And then... Prince uh, King Charles visited her once on like day eight and her kids and other family didn't visit her at all. What the fuck? And there's more. I'm stopping here because I could go forever. <laughs> Previewing here first, uh, Jeff's uh, What About That new podcast on the Midlife Crisis Network coming to you soon. <laughs> I want to show Dude. Jeff of you just yelling, what about that? <laughs> Every statement. Dude, I'm telling you, this Kate Middleton <laughs> shit is sinister. Sinister. I, uh, I don't give a fuck about the royal family. I've often wondered if <laughs> I there's a I give a fuck a about the royal family. I care about Kate Middleton. I don't want to. I don't want to see her go the way of Princess Diana. Yeah. You just want it to be all right. Yeah, I just want her to be safe. I want her to know she's fine. I don't want to get. I don't want to get fucking knocked off in a car somewhere. I hope she just pops up in six months and it was all for nothing. Me too. My point is, is that I will never care. Is what I've learned from this conversation. There is no. <laughs> No amount of intrigue or mystery around the royal family can make me care about anything to do with the royal family. I am just immediately checked out. Well, it's good that you have a friend like me, Andrew, because I care enough for both of us. Yeah. You can carry that, that care for us. Both. I, I, I'm I on just, it. I'm, I fucking wear it. It's a badge of honor. I care. How is Jeff the most invested in this when, Gavin, this is your royalty, and Andrew, this is also sort of your royalty? Isn't Canada <laughs> still connected, sort of? That's, Come on, yeah, man. But like, it's the story of this podcast, dude. I always care a little more. They're on the uh, money. Is that, is that right? <laughs> no, yeah, big time. I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's the, her privacy is all gone, and it's weird. It is a strange line. Yeah. I agree, but people just want to know she's okay. They could issue some sort of a response. Well, what if she's not okay? And what they're what they supposed to say? <laughs> then, but then, but people want to know why are they covering it up? Why are they hiding it? What if she's dead? Well, if, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's TikTok. What if she was? What if she's unalive? Ugh, <laughs> Jesus! If you haven't heard, please calm yourself. The company is unalive. Uh, going into the I don't want to alarm anyone, but I gotta focus on something other than my than the dumpster fire of my life so the kate middleton thing it, it's just it's hitting that spot for me i think my house was waiting to hear the news that i was no longer employed and it's just decided to shit itself well you say that you've had a fungus you've had a fungus growing on the side of your home well i've, for, I've always like had my fungus and my slime <laughs> yeah but now uh my my disposal in the sink is packed up um doesn't go and about once a week at exactly 3 a.m., and I don't know why this is, uh, a different smoke detector starts beeping. Hmm. It's like all the batteries were put in at the same time, and now they're all running out one by one, but they only run out at 3 a.m. If someone understands how the frick in hell that is possible, please let me know. It's always three. Like exactly three? It'll give or take 10 minutes, but it's, it's always just like, oh, here we go again, and now I'm up a ladder at... 3 15 in the morning trying to not fall off mainly and then also try and change a battery why don't you this is a, this is a life pro tip i read on reddit that i don't follow myself but i feel like is a good one why don't you just change every battery at the same time when one chirps and then you'll know they're all fresh because it's 3 a.m and i just want to go back to sleep and then the next morning i think oh it's gonna be a while uh, waste of batteries how's it a waste of batteries I don't think it's a waste of batteries at all because I do the same thing. I, well, Gracie says, <laughs> well, because what if some of them are good? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just wasting the rest of the good battery, dude. Well, it's... I think because it's been so many years, <laughs> they're all not good. I think is what what's happening. Hypothetically, but they could be prematurely replaced. Gavin, do you love getting all this <laughs> advice from people who do not follow any of this advice themselves? <laughs> or are you just... <laughs> Every time I have to change a battery, for me, it's the smoke alarms, but also it's my like my home alarm system, you know, like the glass break sensors and stuff. You have to change yeah. the batteries on those. And there's like, I don't know, two, like a billion of those in my house. And I'm constantly hearing something chirp and having to go be like, oh, glass break sensor in the bedroom. Fix that. 
and then think, I should just change them all right now. And then I go, nah, fuck it. I don't need to do that. And then I'm you. And uh, uh, four days later, I'm doing it again. Constant. I, I also, I didn't have a nine volt. I, did, I just never have those. So I'm rummaging around trying to pull them out of other shit. Pulled one out of the, uh, <laughs> the keypad of my safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you the get ceiling. the battery caddy, like I've been saying. Hey, I have one. It's just empty on the nine volts. <laughs> oh, wait. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> the alarm in Nick's voice. Oh, no. I found that on my uh, disposal as well. I could, there's like a, like a bolt underneath. So I can put a wrench on and like manually turn it to try and gr grind up all the, the stuff. And I turned it and it went, because there's clearly something stuck in it. And then that got stuck. And then the wrench got stuck on the <laughs> bolt. So at the moment, it's uh, at the moment, I just have to make sure I leave it unpowered in case I forget and turn it on and it wings a wrench into my shins. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I had a, I, I have a new badge of honor, Jeff. I don't know if you've ever accomplished this. Gavin doesn't do ads. I had an ad scrapped. It's the first time. Nick shut down one of my ads. He said it was not. It was not clear. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, he made me. He made me redo an ad. Have you ever had to redo an ad, Jeff? I've had to not redo an ad before it came out, but the company has had to apologize and do <laughs> make goods <laughs> for ads that I've done that were released. <laughs> I was about it. <laughs> that, fucking, it's over now, so they don't care. Uh, I did an ad. For, I did. We did a video for Fortnite when it came out that they were not happy with, and we had to do another <laughs> oh, video no. for Fortnite. And I was not allowed by Epic to be in the video. <laughs> and was that before Fortnite was Fortnite? It wasn't Battle Royale yet. It was just like yeah. some. Yeah, it was the, uh, the zombie thing. It was like a horde mode. Yeah, remember this one? Yes, fucker. <laughs> Devil May Cry Five. I got in trouble for that one too. <laughs> what happened with that one? It's the best ad read of all time, and it was dragging and so fucked. And they're like, "You have to do it again. We have to do a make good for this." <laughs> it was. It is the ad that everyone points to. Like, man, ads should be like this. You know who doesn't feel that way? Companies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was live. Why don't we one, just right? get them approved before they go? Oh, was that was it live? Yeah, it was at the Sunshine Room yeah. uh, downtown. Uh, it was where, like I think Jeremy got super drunk. Ev yes, everyone Everybody. got fucking hammered, and then it was just that thing, and then me, <laughs> somebody filming me falling apart because I was producing that show at that time. It was maybe uh, some <laughs> companies need to do some research over the idiots that they're hiring, though. A hundred percent agree with you, Gavin. A thousand percent, and that's why we're gonna we have a lot to figure out in the coming months. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome to the club, Andrew. It's, Thank uh, you. What did you do wrong? Well, yeah, I think in my defense, uh, I think I'm in the right on this scenario. I think this is a mistake. You think Nick's in the wrong? What? Uh, no, I don't think Nick was in the wrong to make the decision he made, but I think that anyone in my position would have also probably made the same mistake, assuming you didn't fully read the copy ahead of time. Um, <laughs> you get the copy, and I, what I typically do, it was for a company that uh, we've never had an ad from before, and so I was scanning it mainly to find the sections where they're like, improvise in this section, or like what the demands are for reading this thing, but I didn't read like Every single line. How far drilled into the safety deposit boxes of Payday were you when you were scanning through this? <laughs> this was, can't blame Payday on this one, oh. but uh, essentially it was for a deodorant company, and there's some line about, do you want to smell like a zero? And I went on this monologue about how you don't want to be, there's no scenario in which a zero is good, outside of maybe golf, but even golf is like you want to be minus, so that's not great. Or maybe like debt owing is a scenario in which you'd want to see a zero. But outside of that, nobody wants to be a zero. And then I continue to read through the copy. And at about the middle point of it, there's a section about how people that use this deodorant then scored a a sm like a, a smell level of zero compared to other people who, after using this deodorant for X amount of time, smelled like a six on the smell scale. And that you want to smell like a zero, not a six. So I realized that 
the thing I was shitting on at the beginning of like, you don't want that. Nobody wants to be a zero. And then the copy said, so don't you want to be a zero? And I had to <laughs> I had to pivot and say, disregard everything I said previous to that. <laughs> Uh, ignore that. You want to? You don't want to smell like a, a, a six. Be a zero. Why did you just go again? Why did you just edit? Why? Why did you do everything as a wanna? Because I, I, I don't know how to. I don't know that we're allowed to edit. I keep forgetting that that's the thing that we could do. What? So are I. What are you talking about? about? What the fuck does that mean? What? And I feel like it's helpful to Nick if I do one So I tried to do it, every single ad read I what do. You did? Dude. What about what you did is helpful to Nick? Well, I thought it was funny. I thought it played well. I'll and I thought maybe I recovered in the back half. So I let I let Nick know that that's what happened. And then I didn't hear anything for a day. And I thought, I guess that's fine. I'm excited for that ad to come out. And then he said, I just listened to it. You have to do it again. I think there will be a request for a do-over if you don't well first off uh for the record jason tatum is jersey number zero and i'd be proud to be a number zero because he's a top 10 nba player well, that's, yeah no, uh, i didn't know that and uh, second that's uh, you just do multiple takes and then however bad of a job you did is how hard you have to apologize to nick or whoever's editing it at the end of the video that's how i do it i just go geez i'm really sorry about this one good luck and I just, it, it was especially bad when I first started doing ads. It would take me like 45 oh, minutes to do an ad because I'd just worst. delete them yeah. and then I'd start over. Uh, especially if, if you get in a, if you, I, I don't know if you do this thing, but if I do it like mostly right the first time, I'm okay. But if I stumble over something and then I stumble over that same thing again, <laughs> I'll fuck it up 86 times before I can get it right. But Andrew, say you nail the first half and you flub it, you just flub lord the second half. Why wouldn't you just go to where you, up until where you were nailing it, make a cut there, and just go from there? Because then Nick would have to make a cut and correct it. Why don't it, you make so the cut? I don't know how. We'll, we'll, we'll just cut. stop recording, go back, find out where you, where you nailed it oh, up to, and, and then start I, recording. I, wait, so you're saying instead of scrolling all the way to the beginning and deleting it, just scroll to where the flub was and then delete yep. that part? Ah, oh, I never... Yeah. Right, that's what you just described as editing. Yeah. <laughs> It's harder oh. when you do the ad, because I do ads on my channels, and I do them on camera most of the time, so I, I often do have to go on a nice run. You know what? Unless I'm hiding with B-roll, but your, <laughs> yours is audio. These are the kind of efficiencies we're going to need to be working on in the coming months as we, uh, as we transition yeah, we to the need new like, thing. Yeah, we need like a... We need like a training camp and a combine to like <laughs> yeah. really get this. We, we need one of those on the. We need I'll one of those the RNC. Thing. We need to go to West Virginia for the weekend, like the RNC, and have a have a fucking uh, powwow or whatever. You want to be Not like the RNC? Well, that's what they always do. They always have those like. <laughs> no, I don't want them. I was making a joke. I'm just saying you're the one that said it. I like. Well, it I just fun. read it in the news right now. They're having trouble because dickhead Mike Johnson can't get anybody to go with him to fucking West Virginia because a all the dumbass Republican senators and Congress people hate each other because they all suck, and then b nobody wants to go on vacation together to West Virginia. I just was using it as an example. I uh, I'm excited to be hands on with you guys going forward and learning all the things that I'm doing wrong in my day to day, <laughs> advancing my process because it is. Me too. I, I, <laughs> but this is—I this, don't think that's something to be learned. No, I just I learned it, so Gavin. I disagree. <laughs> I don't know what how else to describe what I. You just told me something I never thought of. I've learned a new thing I can do. I've never done that. It would have never occurred to me. I don't know. I just—I really need to just spend the day with you and watch your life. I—I I wonder how many inefficiencies <laughs> there are between you just going to the grocery store. Do you know about bags? Yeah, <laughs> bags are great. Okay. I love that's, bags. That's how they get their milk. Um, it's not, it's not a thing that happens where I live. Um, I had an unbelievably dumb moment. One of the, the more embarrassing ones I've had in recent, in a recent time where for some reason my brain is trained that if, if, if somebody has to do a thing, then I have to follow the same rules that they are currently following. So my partner has had a really sore throat for the past few days and can't talk. And uh, we like to play connections at the end of the day. It's like a group game that we do. I don't know. Are, are you familiar with connections? How's it anyone? Work? Yeah, I play. Connections. It's uh, yeah. it's a New York Times game where you get sent a list of like it's four four rows and there's four words per row and four of those words are connected in some way and you need to try to figure out what the common thread is between each section of four. 
So you're trying to group them, essentially. You should, by the way, be transferring all four words every day onto your list of things. <laughs> that would be... Yeah. Once again, you are changing my life today, Gavin. New York That's Times a great gives idea. you 16, Let me uh, watch you. 16 examples well, a day. <laughs> so we're playing, and my, <laughs> my partner can't talk, and I'm looking at it, which is, you know, typically we're like, ah, oh, I think this might be this, this might be that. And it was, I want to say the four words were frisbee, bone, tennis ball, uh, like Kong toy. And I went, oh, those like are all shit. Yeah. I was like, oh, that, that's all dog stuff. But I, <laughs> my brain decided that because they can't speak, I'm also not allowed to speak. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I highlighted, I clicked all four and I showed them the screen and I, <laughs> I, I swear to God, I bent both my hands so it looked like <laughs> paws, and I went, woof, woof. And they, they, they lost it, and they said, what are you doing? You can just say dog. You can speak. You can talk. I was like, so locked in, in my head that- Handicapped. Yeah, I was like, they can't talk. I can't talk. How am I going to convey this? I'll bark <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> They get they they got the point across though. <laughs> I did. It, I conveyed it very well, but I, I set them back probably because of the laughing of how dumb I was in that moment. <laughs> and uh, I think that they mainly just said, "I wish people could see this, and that it's not just on the show. That this is just <laughs> this is just you. You truly are living with so many skulls on." Yeah. It- <laughs> It's just, I don't know why. I don't know it's why it keeps Andrew's, happening. I just, Andrews lives so. <laughs> yeah, it's just Andrew all skulls on his asso. <laughs> asso. I am asso. Um, an absolute asso, for sure. <laughs> I, uh, I had an interesting brain thing the other day. It's funny you mentioned that. Uh, I don't think this is an embarrassing or stupid thing like you, but I, but I, I wanted to bring it up because I wanted to see if you guys have ever experienced anything like this. I've been, you know... Uh, it's no secret I've been looking at houses in Michigan forever. Um, not not making any concrete plans right now or anything, but I'm always just like looking. It's become it's become like kind of like my Kate Middleton uh, obsession. It's uh, I just you know I just like it's a good way to pass time, idle time, looking at, at whatever houses are for sale. And I was just trying to think about like a house that I like a kind of house that I would like. And I was uh, I was trying to explain it. Or I was trying to I was trying to search it and I was trying to think of uh, like key ter- keywords for the this kind of house that I wanted, and it had this like wraparound porch and I was trying to remember I was like oh there's this house I remember seeing once, and it had this yeah it had this porch I really remember liking it and it was in the yard and I could remember like I can remember the, where the car was in the yard but I was having trouble seeing part of the house I don't remember what it was like the upstairs or something in my head. And then I was thinking about it and I was like where the fuck was that house How long ago was it that I saw it and I realized. It was a house I read about in a book, and I've never seen the house, but I guess I, ima- I liked it so much when I read the book, it left such a distinct impression that my brain remembers it as a house I've seen and a real house, and I can remember the yard and the outside of the house, and like, a- like about three quarters of it, I just can't remember certain parts of it because I guess nothing happened in that part of the book, but... I've been thinking about this house from time to time. I realized for a couple of years in the back of my head, like it's a thing I've actually seen and I remember it as a place I've seen or, or been to, but I never have. I just invented it at a, at reading it in a book. <laughs> have you ever done that where you remember something and then realize that the thing you're remembering isn't something that you, isn't something real. It's something that you envisioned yourself. I've had it in dreams, but not books. Yeah. It was, not, so, not books. It was such a weird feeling because I could almost remember being there. And I just have never thought about that before, or that's never come up before where I remembered something from a book as if it was something that, that I had actually seen. Were you disappointed when you realized? Yeah, a little bit. I was confused. It took me a while to figure it out. <laughs> like, because I was like, how can I remember this so well? And then I was like, oh, I remember the book really well, too. And then I went back and I was like, oh, yeah, it was the fucking... <laughs> I read the passage. <laughs> it's a fucking book. Just a fucking book. It was just a fucking book where a private detective uh, helped a lady get off drugs and hit her from uh, somebody who was trying to kill her. Oh, yeah. Kate Middleton? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I guess that depends on how honest Gavin wants to be with us. I can't I tell posted, you anything right uh, now. I posted my canceled ad in our Slack, so that I don't know if we want to throw that into the post credit. I don't know. Can we also put in Jeff's Devil May Cry ad? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> I, I, of ad. I guess so. It's around here somewhere. At least we can link to it in the description. Also, we were making fun of you, Gavin, earlier for not responding to any of us via text. And uh, <laughs> I sent you that's one not, of the better that's photos. That's not how I remember that <laughs> yeah, conversation yeah, exactly how it at happened. all. Yeah. Wait, when, when was this? It was when we were, do we were doing our Let's Play earlier today. We were playing wrestling. And, uh, oh, I wasn't there. Yeah, you weren't there. And we were oh. all talking about how you don't respond to us in text anymore. And we decided if it's, are you busy or you just don't like us? I sent you one of the better photos I've ever sent you in my life and nothing. Just crickets. Did you? Yeah, dude. I sent you a, a picture and I just said self care. It was me doing a face mask. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so I've been, uh, I've been ain't sleeping good. And I see a lot of these at like, uh, <laughs> to the middle of the night and then when the notification's gone the next day I don't ever think to go back in yeah, I do remember fair. it and it was mm -hmm. phenomenal that's fair that's fair <laughs> I figured you're also busy with South by probably no not at all oh. not, not done a single thing for it I mean that seemed like an easy out where you could have yeah, gone absolutely. yeah man you've been busy with <laughs> why would I lie uh, like, why, why would I lie I don't know it? it just it just seemed a gr it seemed like a great way to put a button on the conversation where he wouldn't keep bothering you <laughs> yeah. what about this for a button I've got a clip. <gasps> we have, but we're so Wait. over. Oh my god! Fine. Are we over Fine. time? You, I mean, you Fine. never told Whatever. us to stop. No. All right, hold on. I, I, I've, I've written the time. Oh, we here. should never start really wrapping up. Three fifty-nine All right. p.m. All right, here we go. Here, go. Uh, go with the clip. Maybe a unique way, but I'm curious if anyone else does this. Mm. Uh, <laughs> oh no. So I was cleaning. I cleaned my bathroom recently, and I have this little um, wooden, like trash type thing. Andrew said trash. <gasps> oh. Oh, oh no. Yep. Oh no. It's yep. it's what? weird. He doesn't seem so upset about that. What <laughs> happened? What I don't remember what happened if I did that. What happened? You're not allowed to ever say trash again. Well, you have to say rubbish, or I think you eat, eat a pencil or something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Sure. Throw another one on. What was it? Why not? We, we need the face of story. And yeah, you're only allowed to say rubbish, buddy. Oh, I'm, I'm aware of that. If we ever office together, post whatever happens, uh, we need a whiteboard full of current rules. <laughs> we do. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Can we make sure Jeff writes them out and he starts really, really, really <laughs> big at the top and they get so fucking small and illegible at the bottom? We need like flow charts. Like, did Andrew say trash or rubbish? Yes, no. And then lines. And then we need to see what's in the new bubbles. You know what I will say? Speaking about a new office, if we were ever to get one, I bet we could build a whole room out of those clocks. Yeah, send me the clocks. I'll make a, I'll make a room for them. Give me a thousand clocks. A second home. We could easily make a little cubicle, like the clock room. Yeah. We could just make a podcast <laughs> set. That's perfect. In my studio, we'll make a podcast set entirely of clocks. Ooh. It'll look just like the break shit or the break show set, but made of clocks. The second little pig built their home idea. entirely out of clocks. <laughs> as the wolf huffed and puffed. Although if I have to change all those freaking batteries at 3 a.m., I'm going to be really good. <laughs> That was actually the funniest part to me about the thousand one clocks is batteries not included. You're gonna have to put in like seven hundred dollars worth of batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Just powering that joke is gonna be a nightmare. How loud is a thousand and one clocks ticking at once? Oh shit! I bet it's gonna sound. <laughs> yeah. Are we gonna wanna <laughs> record an audio podcast with three walls of ticking aimed directly at us? <laughs> I really want to make this happen now. Yeah. We should bring, you know what we could do? We could create this room and then we could, <laughs> we could set up a deal with police departments for bomb squads where they bring in and uh, they bring in their, uh, their bomb technicians and they have them practice like diffusing bombs in high pressure situations because the ticking will never stop and it'll get them used to it. They can hear it and then they'll be able to tune it out better when they're on the, you know, when they're at a bank and they really got to do it for real. Every every podcast will sound like the Interstellar soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, send, send me all this shit, Andrew. I I maybe is the, it local? No, nah, I. Hmm. Where's it stored? I, don't know. I, don't know. I just looked at the store. We don't have any. <laughs> there are no more clocks available. We have three items. I mean, they're all and, still sat uh, somewhere. We can get them. Let's get them. Let's get them. Right, but we might have. A bunch of uh, sloppy Joe's jerseys and uh, hats and foam fingers and cookbooks. 
if you guys don't buy them on the 29th at 10 a.m. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> D didn't need the time machine for that one. No, no, this, no, okay. I'm, I'm in current time, so I could just kind of drop in wherever I needed to on that one, yeah. Okay. Cool. I have a clip of Eric. Oh, oh no, shit. we have yeah, to let's go. Hear we gotta see the clip. This has to wrap Yeah, we gotta up. get the clip. We'll get the clip in the middle. Nick has the clip. It Nick was, has... uh, it was back when, remember we recorded an episode and Eric and Nick had to be in the same space in the office together to do it? Oh, yeah. And it was, it was just Eric and I at the very end and Nick immediately left and I guess Nick is the one who set up oh. the thing <laughs> and, uh, Eric was like, Eric, it was just Eric and I talking then Eric said, I need, I don't, uh, Nick left. I don't know how to, I don't know how to set up this thing or end this thing. I don't, hmm. I'll talk to you later, man. Bye. And I said, bye. And then I immediately pulled Craig in and you don't, you don't get all of it, but like there's silence for a minute. And then I could just hear in the distance, Eric go, what the fuck? Where the fuck? Where the fuck is this? What the fuck? Nick just, how do I stop the this? call and left? Like, <laughs> so what? <laughs> I, my brain immediately went, I bet you he does something funny in the background. Like, it's just going to be him annoyed. And then you instantly did it, and I got Craig, and so I missed maybe part of it. But it, there's definitely some audio of you just going, the fuck? Where, di where's Discord? Where is this? Just you being confused and annoyed by in a room by yourself because Nick has abandoned you. We keep Nick as the most valuable member of this team because all the rest of us just refuse to learn a couple of simple things about the yeah. process. Yep. Absolutely. Hmm. All right. So we put in that clip at the end of this. I don't know. We got a lot of clips already at the end of it. I don't know if we have room. Do we have, do we have room for that clip? No, on I don't think we have any room. So we'll oh, see. And, and that's the end of 199. Of We're going to have to time machine wow. it in then. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see you next time. What happens on 200? Nothing special because we already talked about that. So we'll see you next time. Bye. We're not stopping. No, why? <laughs> we have to stop. No, oh, the podcast. Mean, oh, you stopped today. Uh, oh, just remind yeah. them. No, we have to stop today. I don't want to stop the whole. <laughs> yeah, but we're, we're not stopping stop ever. One. We're right. we're going forever. Uh, and uh, we're gonna go till somebody dies in podcast oh, on camera. What? And all seriousness. The company is ending. <laughs> it is coming to a close. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> I don't even give a shit if you rate and review us anymore. Just uh, <laughs> thanks. Hey guys, Major League Fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Wouldn't you know it, the gang hasn't recorded yet, so here's some more predictions. It's time to record episode 16. Albert pooped on something he shouldn't have. Gavin has a new kitten. Andrew has six dogs that we never knew about. Nick already wore the mask. Whoops, they forgot to record. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. You know what I hate? Smelling like a zero. Also smelling bad in general. I mean, those are both... Not ideal things. It's not a hobby of mine to smell bad. And this isn't a rare case in which being a zero is a positive thing. Like maybe if you're a golfer. A zero, well, actually, I think you want to be minus in golf. I think zero is not the, the best. I think you actually want to be reverse. So this isn't even a good example. Maybe debt owing is a positive zero. But, but the point is zero is a bad thing 99.9% .9 of the time. And thankfully, you don't have to worry about smelling like a zero. Because Mando is here to, to keep you covered, keep you safe. In a clinical study, men who showered with soap and used Mando whole body deodorant in their pits had an odor score of 0 out of 10 after 12 hours. No odor. Men who showered with soap alone had an armpit odor score of 8 of 10 after 12 hours. Big odor. You don't want that. Big odor's bad. No odor is good. Introducing Mando. From the makers of Lumi deodorant, Mando is clinically proven to control odor for 72 hours wherever you stink, pits, package, feet, and beyond. It's got you covered. Make the switch to Mando whole body deodorant and smell like a zero every day. So now this is a, a positive thing, is a zero. I actually should have read the copy of this ad. I, <laughs> I thought they meant zero as in the sense of you stink.
you're a loser. But we disregard everything I said in the beginning about the zero and not wanting that. This is I had this all backwards. This is a good scenario in which you will smell like a zero.